In the last lesson, we exported some data from the Hadoop cluster into SQL Server. And in this lesson, we're going to do kind of the opposite of importing some data from SQL Server and putting it into the HDFS file system that Hadoop manages. Let's take a look at the command that we're going to use to do that. At the top of the script, uh, just some housekeeping tasks to delete the data that I'm going to import so that I don't encounter file collisions and so on. The scoop command we'll use for that is very similar to the last one. The biggest difference is instead of export, we have the word import here. So our scoop command is scoop import, and we specify the driver, we specify the connect string, which is a, simply a JDBC connect string. Then we have some specific commands like the table that we want to import, how to split this if the file gets so big that it needs to split into multiple files, how that should be done, and we say the surrogate key, which is a key in the database. Then we have a target dir, and this is going to be the directory within HDFS. So demo slash aworks actually is going to imply user Cloudera, so it's actually user Cloudera demo aworks, and verbose again so that we get a lot of output that we can look at on the screen. Looking within SQL Server, we can kind of take a look at this table to see what we're going to get. So it's within AdventureWorks DW2012, we'll have a table called Hadoop Order Info. That's this table here. So here are the columns it has. And if I select from that table, I can see I have a surrogate key here, bikes, etc., etc., etc. So if you've ever used any kind of AdventureWorks query, it looks a lot like that. Very typical transactional stuff. So let's go ahead and import that. So what I'll do is I'll open up a command prompt and again I'll go into my folder where I keep these tests and um, I'm gonna just a little housekeeping I'm just gonna delete this local file and I'm going to delete the output from cloud from HDFS in case it's there already and that's HDFS remove the AWorks folder and everything that's in it. So I deleted it. I guess it was there. Now I'll copy that command to the clipboard, paste it in, and let it run. And what that will do is use JDBC to query from SQL Server, pull down those result sets, and then it's going to split that into chunks of files. So if, if, there was, if this was a very large table in SQL Server, it would actually create many files within the HDFS file system and in a sense, that table in SQL Server could be distributed among a whole lot of HDFS nodes out in the system. Okay, that's done. That was pretty quick. So if I look at what happened, I got my map went to 100%. Didn't bother telling me reduce was at 100%. Tells me something about my I.O. and data volumes and whatnot. That's the verbose. So if we go look at that in the HDFS system, it'll be in the demo AWorks folder. So if I go to user, and it's under my user ID, Cloudera, demo AWorks, I can see that I actually have four files, so it did split those. And let's say I look at the second one, I can see that that data from the SQL table has been loaded in as rows or as lines of a text file that are comma delimited. Now I can use that any way I'd like. If I want to write Python scripts or Java programs that are MapReduce, I can do that. Or, since this data is pretty structured and has consistent column layouts, I actually could go ahead and create a Hive table within Hive and query that on the HDFS side if I want to.